Many of you know kind of the habit and routine of my life enough to know uh, that I, I endeavor to spend time from different portions uh, of the Bible uh, every day. And I like to read through the epistles. I like to read through the gospels. I like to read my proverb every day, any proverb every day people in the room, like some of y'all did it today, I'm sure. Um, and then I like to read through the Old Testament. And I just, I kind of methodically kind of work my way through that every, uh, every day and just take a, take a piece from each and just let it feed and help me. Currently in the Old Testament, I'm in the book of Jeremiah. And um, Jeremiah has some wonderful verses of scripture, some wonderful things in it. Um, certainly Jeremiah chapter one is a very powerful uh, chapter of scripture and what the Lord is saying to Jeremiah right there and how the Lord told Jeremiah, he said, um, uh, before I formed you in your mother's womb, he's like, I've called you to be a prophet to the nations, you know, and uh, I've given you words to speak and don't be afraid of the faces of the people that you're going to speak those words to. And over my life, I've always enjoyed Jeremiah chapter one, but now I'm reading through Jeremiah and uh, I've read it before, but as you read through Jeremiah, you realize uh, the reason why the Lord told him not to be afraid of people's faces, because the Lord gave Jeremiah some pretty challenging things to say to the people of God. And so I'm reading through Jeremiah and I come across a couple verses of scripture, but one particularly, this is not going to sound like the most encouraging thing just yet, but just bear with me for just a moment. In Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 22, the, uh, the Lord through Jeremiah said, return you backsliding children and I will heal your backslidings and indeed we do come to you if you are the Lord our God. The Lord through Jeremiah is telling his people, says, return to me. Return to me. How many of you know that uh, even after you make Jesus the Lord of your life and you've endeavored to follow him and his plan and his purpose for your life, that it's possible to drift? Anybody know what I mean by that? Like, it's possible for you to still love the Lord today, still have confidence that heaven is your home, you know, and maybe I've had experiences in the presence of God and with the Spirit of God, and it, it's been good maybe in the past, but maybe you're not at the same place that you were with God before. And when I hear testimonies like this and you know, when you hear young people talk about, you know, I got drunk with the Spirit, and I got words from God, and kids are getting words from God to speak to other kids, and it's like, wow, that is a lot going on right there. I mean, it's a, it's a lot going on, but you can tell there's a fire. Are y'all with me on that? Like, there's a fire, and there's a passion, and anytime I'm around anybody who's on fire for God, it stirs my fire. So I, I don't think when there's a 13 or 14 year old teenager up here saying the, the experience they've had with God, I'm not thinking, well, like, well, they'll learn one day to really walk with God like I do, you know, or they'll, you know, they'll eventually, you know, come to grips with reality of life and learn how to manage their emotions and not be so overstimulated, you know. No, when I hear young people talk about the things that they experience in the presence of God, I'm like, oh, that makes me hungry for more of God in my life. And sometimes you don't realize that you're lukewarm until you're around somebody that's on fire. Do you know what I mean by that? I mean, you may think, I think I'm okay, you know, I think I'm feeling pretty good. And then you come to a service and if it's your first time to our church, you're like, well, there's a lot going on today, a lot of passion in the, you know, and there's young people and they're jumping up and down and some are running around the room and shouting and dancing. You're like, well, that's a, there's a lot of activity and a lot of excitement in the room. But you see all that and, and, and more than just going with that's over emotional spirituality, you know, it ought to stir something in your heart and in your soul to, to want everything that God has for you and to get so full of him and his spirit and his power and the fire that you can experience in him and in his spirit that you just don't care what anybody thinks anymore and that, amen. And it don't take long to drift. You know. As somebody said it this way, Living on past experiences is living on stale manna. I believe it was D.L. Moody. 
And I think sometimes we can get there after we've kind of had some good experiences with God. You go, boy, that, boy I remember, boy. 2002 was my year. <laughs> you know, 1996, that was my year. 1978, that was my year. Camp two years ago, that was my year. And now realize, man, there's more that the Lord has in store. And I don't want to drift away from God. I want to lean into what he has for me now and in my future. I want to lean into that. Praise God. And if for some reason you're at a place in your life where you're like, you know what? I'm not where I used to be with God. And I need a fresh fire. I need a fresh yielding. I need a fresh surrender. Maybe you're in a place where you're kind of maybe with, like the prodigal son. You know, maybe you literally have chosen to walk away from the Lord. But today, you're coming to yourself like, what am I doing? Why, what, why, why? I need to return to the Lord. And I'm not saying necessarily you're not saved or you're not going to heaven, but I mean you're, you need to return. Turn your heart to the Lord or repent from the direction you've been going, the way you've been living, and turn to the living God and find the restoration of purpose and life and fire once again. You can do it. Just return. I know that word is, is kind of like not the prettiest word, but backsliding. Is, you know, if you're raised in church, around church, you're like, you've heard that before. You're like, oh, here we go. Preacher about to lay it on thick. You backsliders. Da, da, da. You're going to hell. Come to the front now. That's not what I'm doing. Scripture actually says it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. And even in the story of the prodigal son, he thought his dad was going to respond one way. But when he came back, when his father saw him from afar off, his father began to run to him, embraced him, kissed him on the neck. Hey, man, had a party for him, celebrated him, put new clothes on him, ring on his finger, and then actually rebuked his brother because he didn't celebrate him. A returning to the Lord, for the person who's returning, it may be a very like humbling and like gut-wrenching kind of moment, but for the people of God who watch those return to the Lord, it ought to be a celebration. It ought to be like, woo praise God. This is, I'm not judging you, I am celebrating what God is doing in your life. Because probably for all of us, we may have been there a time or two in our life. And I just sense, boy, all these testimonies are not for us to go, what a great camp. I'm glad those young people finally figured it out. Maybe they won't be bad people. It's like, oh man, thank God. Purpose and destiny is found in his presence and by his spirit and through the word of God and among the people of God. And Lord, you have a place for me like that. Playing the drums in the house and running around like a wild Holy Ghost woman, that's, that may not be normal, but it sure is good. <laughs> may not be what every teenager does, but I'd be okay if they all did. That's a little bit wild, a little too far. I just got to tell you, this generation is going to go far one way or the other. I'll take all the wild, Holy Ghost, God-loving, praising, worshiping, fire, running. I'll, I'll take all of that. I'd rather have some fire to work with than to be like, well, we're all dead up in this place. There's a fire that the Lord has for every generation. So whether you're young or you're a little bit older, the Lord has a fire for you.